say that it's an interesting opportunity. Um, okay, so it's 11 o'clock. So um, we're gonna officially start. Those of you who could do video, um, I just think it's helpful for us to take these opportunities to really get to know each other um, visually, if possible. Hi, everyone. Um, and, and just start to like build a community. Um, the Alliance have, has been doing um, meetings and, and sort of, you know, people have been getting on and sharing ideas. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to do a little bit more of um, a structured mini conference um, with presentations where um, we are going to have our lovely speakers. And thank you so much. Um, Abby Ellie and Julie Spira, um, Terry Orbach. Um, we are going to, uh, Violet actually cannot um, make today, but um, it's like the middle of the night in Singapore. <laughs> um, but uh, Jamie is going to be presenting on um, how they've really transitioned their entire business to go from meeting in person to um, doing virtual sales and virtual um, uh, meetings uh, for screening and sales. So that's, that's really interesting. So thank you for our speakers. Um, how we're going to do it, our format is going to be that each person is going to speak for about 10 minutes on their topic. And then we're going to have a Q&A. And then at the end of um, everyone's talk, then we're going to kind of open it up to a larger Q&A. And um, I'm thinking um, you could either potentially raise your hand or you could just unmute, um, depending on how many people join. We have about 39 people. Hey, Tammy. Um, so um, we, are, we are going to record it um, because there was such um, a desire for people to be able to listen if they weren't able to join. So I just want everyone to know that. Um, and, um, and then, um, we will, um, hopefully be doing these every couple weeks. Uh, I mean, we'll see how long we, we continue to do this, but maybe even after this whole situation, it's a really good way for us to connect and collaborate. So, um, so welcome everyone. And thank you so much for being here. Um, I uh, was looking at sort of the opportunities of um, what are the key ways that we can really reinvent ourselves and utilize tools that are available to us and utilize our downtime in a really productive way, um, not only to connect and feel like we're learning and growing from each other, but like what do each of us have and what have we done that has been really successful and how can we implement new ideas to help sustain if let's say we're not getting leads and we need to figure out like how are we going to keep our our businesses afloat especially if we have employees and rent and such um what creative ways um can we um, implement new ideas to sustain our businesses. And, and in our, our business, um, it's really interesting. I mean, we're in New York and there's no one that's going to be going out on dates. So let's, let's, let's just sort of start with that. So um, reinventing kind of the way that we are doing our business was really important. And I think that to take a step back from the panic of throwing many, many darts in as opposed to structuring it. And I spoke with my, my team here is um, Beth Mandel and Ashley Campania. Hi guys, thank you for being like the best team in the world. Um, so we've like talked regularly about like, we're like, should we add this? Should we do this? And, and we're kind of like, let's take a step back and let's look at our core business and then let's look at how we can structure our current leads, our past clients, our current clients and help sustain something that makes sense for them. Um, I'm on a call guys. Okay. Um, and so um, we started doing 
virtual dates for people that you would think would no way in hell would want to do virtual dates there at the beginning we had we spoke with one of the clients a very high-end guy and he was like not for me and we're like actually let's let's take a step back and and think about this um this could really help you to focus on individual people in front of you and it could help you to start kind of building intimacy without rushed connection of like going out, drinking wine, making out with someone, going on the next date, et cetera. So, so let's start sort of reinventing the way we connect, which I think a lot of you are doing. And it has become a really, really successful way of connecting. And, um, I, I don't know whether Beth or Ashley, you want to tell this cute story, but um, about the the preparation for was it last night's date? Do you want? Okay, do you want um, me to tell? You? Okay. I yeah. Uh, well, I've been doing like a the um, mock date with everyone who's going on a virtual date, and I just make sure that their lighting is cute. We try like every place in the room. We make sure that their angles are good. Like you'd be surprised. Everyone wants to have their camera low. So it's looking at their nose, never good. Um, just trying to like make it be, it's first of all, it's a way for me to connect with my client in a way that's fun and playful and they feel great, but also it's setting them up for success. So it's it's been actually kind of amazing. People are going out or going out <laughs> with um, with candidates that they probably wouldn't have given a chance otherwise because they have nothing to lose. They don't even have to leave their house. They can, uh, we can schedule, you know, people more easily. Um, and people are giving people a chance that they wouldn't have normally. So now we have this this couple that's gone out twice or FaceTime twice um, this week that probably wouldn't have even made a connection. They probably I probably wouldn't have been able to get them on a date um, without this. So things are happening and things are are um, connecting in ways that I was not expecting. But Beth has a Beth has a better a good story about her cute boy um, sending. Do you want to tell Beth or I can tell? I'll tell. Um, okay. Um, I, oh, yeah. okay. It, it, the date hasn't happened yet. It's tonight. There's that. But it, just, a, just a cute tidbit is that um, he sent her a bottle of champagne and a box of Godiva chocolates for the video date for tonight, which I just thought it was his idea and I love it. And now I'm going to suggest that to people because I think it's so It's adorable. It's amazing. And, and I think that um, people are the ones that were resistant in the beginning. I, I think people are going to be a lot more open. And um, we created Beth's, Beth's ideas, like, let's put together amazing questions and a template to guide people on these dates. And, um, and so I think a lot of you have done that. And um, I actually think that that helps to feel more confident in our product. And I know that a lot of us are pretty honest salespeople that we can't sell a product that we don't believe in. And I think that the more positive feedback we get that we're actually doing a killer job with the tools that we have now, the more we're able to sell um, products. And one, one thing that we created was um, a monthly product. Just, uh, you know, let's take it one month at a time. So that could be something that could be interesting for you guys. Um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to report on, on our end of, of what's worked, but, but I do think that focusing on the joy of virtual dates and doing the mock date setup setting people up for success with questions, et cetera. And we had, um, we have uh, a second date already happening that people are excited, right, Beth? Is that your guy that's going on a second date or is that you, Ashley, that someone has a yeah, second date? Yeah, uh, they had a second date last night, back to okay. back. Yeah, um, Tuesday and Wednesday. Is today Thursday? Yeah, the last two days <laughs> um, they've had a date. So I think that they're going to do a third soon, which is great. It's going well. Um, so Abby, I have a question for you. I would love for you to share your story that just came out in Marie Claire, which is exactly this topic. 
So go ahead, Abby. Wait, you're on mute, Abby. Mute. So many people in my life have been like, please mute yourself. So now I actually am. Um, so one thing that I thought was interesting, just as you were talking, you know what's going to happen eventually? I swear, mark my words, and if ye, we, you, we, I just shoehorned myself into this, could uh, get it virtual reality dating, like augmented reality dating. So you know when you go and you like put on a thing and then you get to like see, it looks like you're with a person in, in person. Whose phone is that? Oh, I don't want that. Sorry. But... Um, you know what I'm saying? So like a VR date. So it's you feel like you're actually with a person, but you're in your own house. Anyway, I'm just saying that's like something for the future. But that's not, it's genius. But that's not what my story was about. My story was about this couple who met um, on a, they met on Bumble and they went out on one date or two dates and she, he lives in Mystic, Connecticut and she lives in New York and she was bugging out about what was going on. And he said, well, just move in with me. And so he did, and she did. And so he is upstairs in the upstairs, she's in the downstairs and they sort of meet in the middle. Um, I mean, she didn't want me to get into the fact, I'm sure there are moments when she is in fact in his bedroom, but um, you know, she didn't want me to blast that all over Marie Claire, but um, yeah, it's a cool story. And I thought, well, of course, this is what's gonna happen. People are gonna end up, relationships are gonna accelerate really quickly, whether they're gonna, burn out i don't know it'll be i mean i'm gonna have to follow these people but yeah can you, post, can you post the link in our chat here so everybody can read it and i can share it on twitter when we're done with the uh when we're done with our session can you tell me how to do that oh there's the chat yeah okay yeah. <laughs> i'll that do that right really now nice. thanks i'll do that okay. right now so after um why don't you kind of go um and and give your talk abby and then after your talk i would be very curious to ask terry what she thinks about escalated relationships such as that because um those of you who, i don't know who knows this but basically i met my husband and he asked me to marry him in 20 minutes and we went to vegas within six weeks and got married and we basically had a a quarantine marriage without the quarantine um and it's 17 years later so i'd be very curious as we're coaching our clients on pacing things, whether there's evidence one way or other about how that works. So, so that'll be an interesting tidbit to talk about. Um, so Abby, why don't you talk a little bit about um, what folks can do um, in their downtime in terms of like writing and taking opportunities for articles, blogs, um, I know that you offer, you know, ghost writing to, to folks if they like actually want to jump in and do a book, but talk a little bit about some opportunities that people can implement into their businesses. Um, okay. Yes. So I, I, you know, and this is something that we struggle with as a writers anyway. Um, but basically, you know, this is, first of all, everyone has to blog and I don't know how many of you have blogs. I don't know how many of you have or consider yourself thought leaders or anything like that. But people now have time to read um, and they like to read about relationships and they wanna read about love and they wanna read about how to meet people and all of that stuff. So I think now is a great time to get your platform out there, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's on, sorry, I don't know how to mute that thing, but um, incoming texts, um, but whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's on, uh, you know, Instagram, doing up in your Instagram presence, whether you have a website and like blog about that, just people want to read, whether it's calling other articles, you can link to mine. You can, I mean, there's, you know, people really are interested in that and they, they want to, they want to hear that and they want to hear what's going on and they want to hear these kind of stories. They want to hear, I think also people are, um, can be bored right now if they're not feeling overwhelmed and so they can be very creative and maybe you want people to start blogging for you too some of your clients to talk about what they're looking for what they're missing what they're lacking what they wish they could do i have this theory that it's not even a theory but you know to me quite frankly for daters i think this is a great time um because courtship's coming back and it, because it has to. And so, yeah, poor, I mean, I think courtship's coming back and so is, you know, 
pornography, but <laughs> it's going to be higher through the roof. But um, but in the meantime, you know, you can date in New York, really. You just stand, you go for a walk in the park and you stand six feet away from each other. I mean, you really can get to know somebody. Um, it could be hard with a mask on, but either way, I think that there's quite a lot. So if you, if you have clients in, in, you know, who are sort of despairing about what they're doing, they really can. They just don't touch each other. So it's it's kind of a nice... I, I and I'm I'm a, in theory a dater myself, although in practice I'm not because I'm not really interested. But um, but if I were to be dating, I think I would enjoy that. You know, it's really a chance to get to know people I, and just kind of, you know, just see who you are and not like go like Lisa said and go out and get drunk and you know make out for hours because it, it that that accelerates it in a different way what 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 my subject and marie claire and this guy are doing uh you know again he has the upstairs she has the downstairs bedroom and they're sort of meeting in the middle and you know they're doing their own thing and they said but what's nice is that they sort of still have the romance and that she said the quote was you know he does his manly things and i do my girly things then we meet up for you know dinner upstairs it's it's sort of cute and they're not lonely so what I think people who are especially single right now, you know, they're craving people to talk to, they're craving uh, companionship. And I think everyone's on an equal plane right now because everybody's in the same boat, really. You know, some people's boats are bigger than others, but um, you know, like those of us who are on Shelter Island. Um, but I think that that's, um, but, but I think basically it's, it's an even playing field. And a lot of people are worrying about work and they're worrying about jobs. And I think there's just some, some opportunity for shared, for commiseration, but not just bitching, just to kind of connect. I love the idea that you just suggested, which I hadn't thought about before, which is I wonder as a collective, um, and maybe it's a project, maybe it's a fabulous international collaborative project where we each um, ask our clients if they want to share their experience through this, you know, and and what it's like um, now, and what it's like sort of reinventing the process with us um, and these virtual dates, and and almost kind of create a documentation. I love that idea, Abby. Um, I think it's a creative idea to sort of engage our, our folks and ask them whether they want to be anonymous or not, but almost journal their experience. And I think that this could be a profound writing piece. Um, it could be a profound writing piece. It could actually get published somewhere. I mean, it could, you know, it could be, for those of you who don't know, I'm a journalist, so that's sort of what I do. Um, and yeah, it could get published someplace. I mean, It'd be interesting if there was a way to even, and there would be because there's so much footage because this all this stuff can be recorded. I mean, to actually do some kind of documentary, you know, about about it. And, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about a six part series on HBO, but I mean, just some kind of little short doc about how what people are doing. It's kind of interesting. I mean, it's very interesting. And yet it's also really a no brainer. I mean, to me, I see it as a no brainer because it's just, yeah, instead of talking in the phone, you're communicating like we are. Like, what's the downside other than you have to shower? Well, that's the interesting thing though. So, so Abby's being modest. Those of you who um, don't know Abby, she's a brilliant journalist um, for many publications, including the New York Times. And she's written a best-selling book called Duped which I read and it's the most amazing book if you guys have downtime to read it. Um, and um, Abby just comes up with, in fact, you can't really hang out with her and be friends with her without her taking notes, I've noticed. <laughs> on everything you say as a potential story. And I thought that it would be really interesting to sort of look at our industry from her eyes and, and start thinking in these ways, like, what is a story and how can I document this historic time? We will never have some, an opportunity of history like we have right now. And not only do we have, uh, this, um, Michelle, I think it's you. Um, thank you. Um, and um, 
you know, taking, taking it's, it's therapeutic for us. It's helpful to document it. It's helpful to connect and it's helpful to tell the story of, of human isolation and human connection in love, in the search of love. So, so I think that those are, those are great ideas, Abby. So it's so love in a time of Corona. Yeah. Exactly. That's the title, baby. Well, you know, <laughs> someone, and someone will do it, so might as well be you. Yeah. I think I wrote a blog post with that title, Love in the Time of Corona, or something like that. But I don't even know where it is anymore, because I've been writing every day. And, and I think all these stories are really good, because I think the more success stories that we can share, like, like Abby's story, and like all of us, you know, have stories. I have three clients that are in committed relationships that started out during this COVID crisis, COVID-19 crisis. And you know, who would have thought, because these are the people that never wanted to go on a video date because they didn't, you know, they didn't have their hair and makeup done. And there are three clients that are in committed relationships. And, and you know, I think the rest of the world needs to hear these stories because they're feeling sorry for themselves and you know, they're feeling lonely and they want to connect. You know, sorry for interrupting. Yeah, so, no, no. I think that's important. Um, do, uh, does anyone have, um, Abby, in terms of, um, you know, I, I know that you're sort of thinking of things like blogging and, and, and documenting at the very least and at the kind of bigger view is like more of like articles and books, like. Oh yeah, I'm, I, 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 I think big. I mean, I don't know how many of you, and I, I edit, I ghost, I, I, you know, I can help with things like this, but. Um, I think that, look, love is evergreen, soft as an easy chair as well, but um, it's, 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 that was a Barbra Streisand joke, um, but love is a topic that everybody wants to read about, and everybody wants to know about, and everyone, especially, and you guys are on the front lines, right, because you're like in the thick of it, and everybody wants to hear from you. Um, and so tips and, and, and stories and all of that, you know, I mean, maybe there's a way to do an anthology of different stories. I don't know. I don't know. But I think that, I, I guess I just feel like now, you know, with not much else to do, uh, I think there's just, you know, I have the, the scenario about what's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of Corona babies. There's probably going to be a lot of Corona divorces. There might be a lot of Corona marriages. Uh, and there's also going to be this like spate of art coming up out of this because, you know, people don't know what else to do with themselves and, or they're just going to be creative. So I feel like now is the time to just be creative. And yeah, if, and maybe there's, you know, I write stories. So maybe you guys are doing things and I can write a story about what you're doing. Like, you know, like if you end up doing like, like, like the, the virtual dates things that, you know, and, and that chocolate and the champagne is lovely. It's a lovely thing. That's really cool. I like the way people are thinking out of the out of the chocolate box. I like it. So um, yeah, that's is that you know is that sort of what you were thinking, Lisa? I think that that's really helpful. Um, I do think that sort of the idea of this teleclass is just to start thinking of these type of things, and and I think already if if we're starting to document our journey and document our client's journey and starting to think of creative ways that we can communicate this, I think right off the bat um, is, uh, is incredibly helpful. Um, someone is asking about- I know, I just, I just- Perfect. Yeah, if anyone, so after this, if anyone wants additional information or contacts or whatever, also feel free to email me. Okay, Abby just wrote, that's her contact, but email me as well if you have any additional contacts or if, um, if you guys are thinking of like, hey, let's get together a group of us that want to do shared um writing from our clients and and sort of see what this looks like let's kind of start our minds working in a creative way so i think um i think that I, that is perfect abby somebody elizabeth noticed this the benefit of virtual sex doesn't get in the way did i say yeah i don't know but women don't lose their power by giving into sex too quickly which is which is i mean that's exactly it it's just you know that's, I mean, everybody, and men aren't dogs. I mean, maybe this will reduce the me too things. 
than me too. <laughs> Seriously, you know? So, so Lisa, this is Rachel Russo. Sorry, I'm not on video, everyone. Hello. Um, I just wanted to point out something funny. Lisa Clampett and I have had an ongoing feud for years about the importance of delaying sex and the rules versus sleeping with people soon into the courtship. So if anyone would love to do a study on that, I would be very excited to see the result, how this is going to impact things if people actually don't have sex early on during love in the time of Corona, because we've been trying to figure this out for years. <laughs> I'd love to see studies and a documentary on that. <laughs> What's the question? What is the debate that you guys have? We just have different views as to, I mean, we both want um, to encourage people to have a healthy relationship and have a foundation and communicate and, you know, really have an emotional connection. But the question is, does having sex too soon mess that up or should women sort of follow the rules um, mm -hmm. and kind of delay it until there is an emotional connection and a real investment from the man? So, I mean, obviously I understand different things work for different people, but we've been debating this for so many years. The, the debate really is not whether you should have sex right off or not have sex. My, the debate on my end is that there are no set of rules for everybody. And that if you build a relationship or intimacy with someone in a way, sleeping with them on date two or three doesn't preclude building an intimate relationship in my mind i'm just saying don't put a set of rules in the books that makes you less authentic of who you are and i think the sexuality is a separate topic so that's more of the debate is like don't be a rules girl that's my only two cents <laughs> you know but some margo brought up something really interesting here which is if your date asks you to have virtual sex or phone sex what's the new rule and when is too soon? And also there's the legality of it, right? Which is, you know, screen grabs and recordings Ooh. and things like that, the Ooh. dissemination. I mean, that's actually really legitimate. What do you do about that? I, I don't know. So the interesting thing is I think that if you're doing things that are rushed and not authentic to who you are, that's the bigger problem, whether it's virtual or not virtual. And I think when people start trying to sort of don't talk for more than 20 minutes because I'm a rules girl and don't ever call them back or don't have sex until like the third month, those, those rules I think are counterproductive. That's a whole other topic. So to this, I think it's the same thing. If you're oh, okay, I'm safe because you're virtually connecting and therefore I can do dick pics or show my boobs. It's the same thing. It's boundaries of like building intimacy. And there's but, an attitude. But there's, all, but there's also legal. There's somebody could have, yeah. could have a recording of you, you know, doing whatever and then throw some asshole and then could throw it off into the ether, right? And so Nobody somebody- Nobody wants to a bench porn site, yeah. Claire, yeah. uh, with Claire, I'm just reading. I'm, I'm, I'm look. I'm pretending like I know what I'm doing with this Zoom, and I don't. But um, no, it's awesome. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> yeah, no, Claire was saying that she suggested bringing it up and agreeing not to do it, and then you could even record the portion portion where you agree, which is right. So that's and then, I mean, then you can get into a big lawsuit if somebody doesn't agree. But I mean, there has to be some kind of virtual contract. There really does. It's very interesting, guys. It's, yeah, I didn't. I mean, yay, Claire. Wherever yeah. you are. Where's Claire? Hi, Claire. Where's Claire? Hi, I'm a former sex educator. So a lot of us oh. are talking about this. And because I am like, I mean, my anecdotal evidence is my husband and I had sex on the first date and we've been together for five years. We also moved in together after like four and a half months. Um, but yeah, a lot of us have been discussing this because, you know, especially right now, um, a lot of people have a lot of time on their hands and maybe, and people are getting a little twisty in their loneliness. So maybe this is a time where people would do something like make revenge porn. And so not that we think our clients are going to do it, but especially if we're like, I just wrote a piece that went up today in now, which is like kind of like the village voice in Toronto. And I included this because people are gonna, you know, if you have three really good dates, you might want to, you know, see if you have sexual chemistry and if somebody is in the habit of doing this or somebody is feeling a little extra squirrely and they want to try something like this, 
it is, I think, a real concern in the same way we talk about, you know, whether it's the rules or not, talking about using a condom, talking about, you know, talking about STI risks ahead of time. The new thing that we're talking about in terms of risk is being, you know, people reproducing your content and sharing it online. Yeah. So have you, have you and your group, Claire, have you thought about um, some sort of um, release, an agreement um, that helps people out and sort of the people that you set up or are you just discussing it? It's a preliminary stage. So I wrote about it in the article that um, just came out today. It actually is still only in the print version. <laughs> It's not useful to have a print version of something right now, um, but I'm going to be including it in the next newsletter I send out, which is just along with some more video tips. I included some in the last one I sent out, but also including very clearly like the safer sex component, which is something that a lot of people would not be thinking about. Um, in terms of like a, a legal release, I mean, I feel like that was something, something I would have to consult with a lawyer about. One of the things is I thought about just recording or even having like a, like a, a standard contract where it says like we both agree to not you know film or take screen grabs of this content and to not release any information about it and that's where even recording a section of the video i don't know whether that would constitute um you know a verbal agreement or not but it would just mostly it's just an extra level of safety where instead of assuming that these things are not going to happen and i think we all assume and hope that they won't by saying it out loud, I mean, it also opens up a good, a good extra step where you see somebody's honest reaction to it. And if they say, oh my God, I'd never think about doing something like that. I didn't even know that was a thing. That's an extra, an extra indicator that maybe you're on the right page. Of course, someone could be lying, but at least like it's, it's bringing something out into the open instead of just assuming. And it's the same like when you talk about STI disclosure, instead of assuming that people don't have an STI, it's a so good idea. Do. Yeah, to ask. Um, so this is kind of like just making sure that you didn't have any nefarious plans and now we're going to agree about that and document it in some way. But you so, know, you know, at, at least as you, you would know, you know, I, I, I wrote a book about lying. So I see if yeah. someone can say anything they want and doesn't mean they're going to adhere to it. So if you are the, to tell you the truth, I would almost put the onus on the, the people setting up the dates you have people sign in advance so they don't even have to you know you you have them you say here we're, this is what we're going to do but you're going to you're going to sign this and you're each going to sign it so they don't even have to deal with it so then the legalities then comes from someone else because and then there there's a, there's a third party involved that to me would make the most sense cuz if you're an asshole you're i mean if you're an asshole you're going to record it anyway but but either way i think i think that's the way to do it yeah, so Charlie's saying maybe there's a DocuSign, someone's saying it's a great idea for an agreement. Um, yeah. And that I do think, though, I, I do think that um, just bringing it up as a caution does, at least at the very least, to make people aware that this is a dangerous, um, you know, you're putting yourself at risk. Um, but, on the other hand, on the other hand, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting the last thing and then I'll shut up. You know, a lot of these guys, or a lot of your clients, the male clients are kind of, a lot of them have, are well known, right? I'm thinking about people I met through you, Lisa, who, who d didn't even want to be in an article. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it works both ways, right? The, they, they would be worried that the women are going to record them perhaps, and they don't want their privates being broadcast in Times Square, where there's yeah, nothing to get now. So I think it helps everybody. I think it's a great topic and I, I, I think we should think about this and just as a follow up, um, maybe we could share a bit about um, what people are implementing and if anyone wants to put that together, um, here's if anyone has a uh, non-disclosure agreement to share, except, yeah, I agree. Uh, Michelle, so maybe we should think about that, the privacy agreement and a non-disclosure agreement, maybe thinking about that and if we want to implement that for our clients. So let's put that on the back burner for now because we have um, a lot to cover in addition, but I think that that's, um, it's a really interesting idea at the very least to caution our clients and let them know that this is at risk when they're doing um, dates to caution and to think about it. And then also if those of us who want to implement a privacy policy, sort of like we all do in our contracts, which is 
We are not disclosing um, people's last names or information um, for their privacy. Maybe we want to add that. So thank you for, for that. Um, indemnification agreement, yes. So let's think about this and let's actually follow up and, and kind of those of us who have a sample idea or if we implement it, maybe we could share it with the rest of us. So um, any questions for Abby before we go to Julie um, in terms of writing, blogging, um, ghost writing, et cetera. Any, any other questions for Abby in terms of what she's shared? You want to know what kind of man I'm looking for? I'm just <laughs> well, that's, that's the whole other thing is Abby is, I'm going to volunteer her. She's available for virtual dates, sucker. But, <laughs> um, but, not, but not really, but go on. Anyway, any other questions? On, on. <laughs> I have a few questions if I could. Yes. I just have a quick question. Hi, Abby. My name is Geneva. I'm on the East Coast of Canada here. Nice hair. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's day three of dry shampoo and dirt. Gorgeous. But um, I was just wondering, I do have a blog and it's just on my website and I share it on my social media. Now, um, I'm very secluded here in Halifax. A lot of my stuff doesn't get out and about very much, but I would love to um, even just pick your brain or just answer a question in regards to how's, what's a good way to really kind of get that stuff out there a little bit more outside of our existing Zone. Well, don't you guys have the internet there? I would hope so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, aren't people, like, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's physically isolated, like, you can just, I mean, you're posting on, what, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, even though I guess no one uses that, Snapchat, what's the other one, TikTok, right? I mean, are, you using, are, are you using all of those? Um, not all of them, but I'm using uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Okay. So, that, I mean, I think that should be plenty. So, I guess what to get your stuff out there, it's, it's a matter of your um, hashtags, right? And it's a matter of okay. the SEOs. I think it's the hashtags. And now mm -hmm. I think anything with, like, the word corona in it is seen by people. C coronavirus, oh, okay. COVID-19. I mean, you know, I would go, I would just run the gamut between yeah. love and love and covid love it night love it 19 that's what we could call this love it 19 but yeah like it well thank you can i just add a suggestion too um one of the things that i recently saw is that podcasts viewing are up these days totally so other way to get your message or your blog out there would be starting a podcast um and, the and you could either do it yourself or interview your clients or other guests. The only problem with podcasts is that there's no money to be made initially. So if you're just doing it to augment your business, that's great. Eventually, I mean, it can blow up. And, you know, right now, I don't know that there's money to be made anywhere. But, um, well, there is some places. But I think that... Um, yeah, that, that's, that's the big thing is, is that you need to, there's not going to be any money, you know, but, but there's no, it's also, you're not going to have any overhead. If you're sitting in your house interviewing somebody or reporting, you know, recording a podcast, that's okay. And you just put it out there. Right. So, yeah, I think that's very smart. People are, they're dying for content. And, and then eventually there's going to be content overload, but whatever. Um, I wanted to ask if, if, you know, we're writing a blog or we've written something, aside from sharing it on our social media, and this could be Abby or anyone, are there good websites to share content that's already appeared somewhere? Like, I know there are a lot of, uh, like, dating-related blogs where they want original content, but are there uh, spaces that are good for resharing existing content or, like, slightly repackaging content but, like, not reinventing the wheel? You mean like you taking content from another site or another site taking content from you? Uh, the latter. Uh, you know what everybody, po po Medium. You ever go to Medium? Medium, <laughs> people post on Medium. People, that's a great place that, that people do it. Um, also, uh, uh, um, Medium and uh, does Huffington Post still let people blog? There's Huffington Post and Ooh. Forbes. Oh, and psychology today. Although you might have to be, you might have to have like a, a credential for that. I'm not sure. But all of those places are great places to be. Ah, somebody just walked behind you. That's hilarious. Um, 
It's my husband. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I just knew. I assumed it wasn't some thief. Um, but but those are all places that that I mean, people could see your stuff and then repurpose it if that's what you're asking. Yeah. Thank you. And I think uh, Julie also said your tango in the comments. So yeah, like the, I, things like that because I think a lot of people who ultimately kind of want writers for free, which is not the best but for if they will share a link to your blog or share a link to your website that's good that's exactly what you want no one's gonna pay anybody i mean it's and i'm a writer no one's paying so it's it's <laughs> it's a problem but no i think i think you want you want to make sure you got to get something from it um the, the new york post just called me today sorry they, they said we oh. want to take your story and repurpose it from from marie claire and I said, that's great, but you have to use my name. You have to say, as written by Abby Ellen and Marie Claire. It doesn't do me any good otherwise, you know? So, yeah, insist. We know um, uh, Matchmaking Institute has the Global Love Report, where we're reposting um, stories um, for any, any topics that are offline uh, topics. So you could... To make sure to subscribe to the Global Love Report and look at the type of articles we're reposting. And if there's something of interest, we're always looking for content, you know? So definitely um, email us as well. You could email info at matchmakinginstitute.com and, and just sort of article for Global Love Report, but take a look at that. But I, I agree, I think that that's a really interesting way to get more exposure. Any other questions for Abby before we go on to Julie? Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Um, yeah, are you thank to, Are you able to stick around till the end? Yeah, I can stick around for a little more. I think so, yeah. Awesome. Okay, Julie, tell us a little bit about, uh, you rock, uh, um, Abby. This is comments. You can see Thank you. you. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Um, so, um, uh, Julie, um, can you share a bit about um, the work that you do, and, and in particular, um, you've you've sort of seen a swing from you know uh, video virtual to offline back to sort of virtual, but also how are you monetizing? Um, you know, helping with online assistance, et cetera. So tell us a little bit about your business model and, and what you're doing. Sure, thank you. Just as um, quickly and fluid as all these news reports change on the coronavirus, I feel that everything in my business is really shifting. I started 26 years ago when you weren't allowed to let anybody know that you were dating in chat rooms. Yeah. And so, you know, when the stigma being so really high, um, it was one of the situations where uh, we were in chat rooms, we were in dial-up internet, I was coaching singles on finding love online, they didn't really want to go offline. Um, I ended up coaching um, a woman who ended up having, being, having the first J-date baby, so it goes way back when. And I think the interesting thing, coming from a technology background and you know, always being in love with love, and having a business cyber dating expert, which is the intersection of love and technology, um, I have spent so many years trying to get people go from online chats and pen pals to offline. That was my biggest strategy. My biggest struggle was to get them to go offline. So now with what's going on, I am reversing my strategy, going back to my roots and really going into my toolbox and, and coming up with um, products and services that I used to use only sort of, you know, with more bandwidth and, you know, a little bit more embracing of singles that are, are lonely. Like for instance, I was making a list of things I'm doing. I created something called Mobile Dating Boot Camp before Tinder actually even came out. And I did it, some of you might've seen it because um, we did it for a few years at um, iDate and it was featured in the Washington Post. Um, again, it might be six, seven years ago. And this is when people were afraid of, oh, I can't meet anybody on my mobile phone. Don't make me join a mobile dating app. Now we can laugh about all of that. So I'm going to be bringing back mobile dating boot camp, only, you know, the Corona version without using the C word because, you know, nobody wants to get sick. And, and so I'm really looking at um, how can I use what I've done in the past and come up with three different, you know, tiers of service that um, help people, um, at all different price points and at all different amounts of whether individual or group. 
So I took existing products and services. Swiping right was my, you know, let me do your mobile, let me review your mobile dating app and your, and your messages to each other and, you know, make them better and put in the right keywords and shorten your sentences and teach you how to, you know, date from the convenience of your mobile phone. Well, now mobile dating bootcamp is, and not, excuse me, mobile, um, swiping, my swiping right program is different. And what I've had to do now is manage everybody's mobile accounts in a different way, starting from the person who really, you know, you know, lost a job and can't afford to do much to, to being practically free with like just two like 20 minute sessions. And I know other people have talked about these virtual dates or these faux dates, and they're really important. So I've looked at sort of, okay, now everything I'm doing has to have a virtual date and you know, dress rehearsal. We have something called the dress rehearsal. And that's where I pick out the outfits and I'm like, yes, no, yes, no. Kind of like Carrie Bradshaw did when she was dumping her clothes out of her closet and, and helping people sort of embrace you know, the video chat. And like I said earlier, before we actually started, um, I, my business went to completely zero um, when coronavirus went into high gear. I had three new clients, high end, the highest package, digital matchmaker, ready to go, ready to pay, photo shoots, ready to go, everyone canceled. And I went into sort of a panic and I had to take a deep breath and say, well, nobody wants love to get kicked to the curb. And so, um, you know, now I have three clients that I mentioned earlier that are in committed relationships that started during the coronavirus. And one went on, um, you know, a, a, a beach walk date six feet apart. Another one um, went on, you know, a romantic date and they're drinking quarantinis and whatever it may be. And they were just dating online. And another one actually met right before the coronavirus um, got serious and they went on one date and then now they're in quarantine by choice, they're not sick. But they're basically in their, in their two week and matter of fact, she wants to go three weeks. So everything they're doing is, um, is virtual now. Their entire love life is texting, um, FaceTime dates, you know, Zoom calls, and streaming movies together using um, using the Netflix party extension, which is something I highly recommend people suggesting on dates. Like I love the idea about you know about your date having uh, sending chocolate and champagne. I mean, like, those are the two things I love the most. But the fact that we have to come up with really interesting dating ideas for our dates to keep the momentum and the spark alive. This Netflix party um, um, extension, I have everyone using it and they, they take turns and they take turns in deciding who's going to select the show or the movie. And there's a comment sec section, just like we have in our chat here. And you can push the pause button. If you wanna go make something to eat and then you, know, you can have dessert or dinner or or you can just you know, hop on a call and say, oh my God, what happened in that last scene? So it's bonding people um, by being creative. Uh, people that love the arts and entertainment because everyone has their, their sweet spots. You know, I have them go on virtual tours of museums together. I have them um, listening to opera together. You know, um, there, there are a lot of really creative ways and you can Google all of these, but we're coming up with lists of the creative ways, the talking points, not being a Debbie Downer and talking about like that you're really depressed because you're not working and you can't get a good night's sleep. Well, none of us can get a good night's sleep. And I was on a um, Zoom call, uh, a group call with uh, Digital LA last week. And one of the guys said the only way you can get, it was actually social media club. The only way you can get a good night's sleep is by taking you know, a Lunesta pill at night. You know, people are doing whatever they can to get through this, but I think I'm so you know, encouraged by everyone else's stories uh, that you're all sharing about how your clients are stepping it up to keep love, you know, in the forefront. Um, and Julie, how, so, so you said that you sort of created different levels of packages, like one is a, like a 20 minute consultation for like how to be productive online. Then you sort of have, are you monetizing these group dates, like the Netflix watching? Like, how are you monetizing each of the steps? Right. So the, the, net, the Netflix um, one is just part of my, my, my high-end coaching clients, you know, the people that, that are on regular dates. 
it's just part, I mean, it's something I recommend at every level. I mean, even free people. So I'm probably going to um, create a free video chat, um, video chat, probably on Facebook Live. And it's going to be for people. It's going to be the name of my podcast that I never launched because I got too busy, which is going to be date chat. And everybody can just like weigh in, chime in, you know, moan and groan, do whatever they want for free. So I'm going to have that day chat. And then of course the swiping right. I mean, it's, I just slashed the price down to $197 for two sessions. I mean, considering it's normally, you know, a $597 introduction product product. I'm finding that if you can come up with something, anything, that's less than $200 um, and it has really meaningful content in it and a meaningful uh, relationship between the two of you that people will sign up for that. And I know it's a far cry from where all of us are with our high-end coaching, but there were extra people, there will be people in those groups who need extra hand-holding who are gonna say, I want, I want to coach with you privately and I need more than two 20-minute sessions. And that's an opportunity to do a very soft upsell. I've seen newsletters out there where everyone is filled with, you know, empathy and what they're going to do for free and taking away their paywalls, which I love. I keep yelling at the LA Times to take away their paywall. Um, but, you know, USA Today has for any, um, you know, coronavirus related stories. And, and I've seen some newsletters that, you know, have kind of disturbed me because they're a little, still a little hard sell. And here's my hourly rate. And now this is what my new hourly rate is. And please book a session with me. Doesn't make me feel very good. I think it's a, it's an interesting balance between, um, because I think a lot of people are like, I want to help and I want to connect people, but how am I going to keep my business alive? So I think there's somewhere in the middle. And I don't think when people are doing hard sells, it's out of greed. I think people are really trying to reinvent themselves and create resources that sort of like you are, Julie, as opposed to charging $5.95, you know, $1.95 is something and it, and it provides, you have to be able to charge to exist to give a resource. So it's a very delicate balance. And, and I think that, that we've got to figure out ways that we could do a little bit of both, like, have resources that are kindness and unifying, but also survive. And I think that that's what you're saying is like, how can we put it out there and also have our company thrive? And, and I think what you're saying is a really interesting thing. Like a, a lower end lead gen has worked for you. And other interesting thing that I think could be helpful is I know we don't do um, online profile writing and maybe, you know, referring out to people like you that offer uh, more affordable products. Like all of us have access to hundreds and hundreds of people that we're not going to be able to provide services to um, potentially at an affordable price. So I think that that's a really interesting thing is like, let's continue cross referring and Julie, like you're a perfect referral source for something like that. And I know a couple other people have like different products, whether it's coaching, et cetera. So, so I think that like for our purposes, what is helpful is how to financially create a model that will sustain our businesses. Because there's a lot of people right now that are thinking my business is not going to be around in a few months. So how to balance like asking for money for resources is not greedy. It's, it's necessary, but like how to communicate it in a, in a way that is receptive to people. So I think that that's something that we need to work on. Um, I do like the idea of continually cross referring and those of you who are matchmakers and are not coaches, you could either refer to, and this is what, what Terry is going to talk about, but we could either refer to coaches or we can get tools to be coaches ourselves so that we could monetize that area. So anything that I think people like, Julie, if, the, if you're sort of doing campaigns or, or price structures that are working for you, that you feel are softer sales, I think that that's an interesting concept. Um, with your higher end products, 
how have you been communicating that piece in a new era? You know, and, and uh, the higher end products is sort of my lifeline. So not having the lifeline is, is, is challenging. And that's why having the lead gens to hopefully get people to, to upsell because they realize that they, they need a little bit more help. And that's why I always say, if you need more handholding, you know, we can offer something, but I never say what the price is in a newsletter blast, because if somebody's, if I'm saying I can do this for you for $6,000, $5,000, that's my rate. People are going to freak out because they don't know that they can pay their rent or their mortgage. So that's why it's a question of doing the soft sell up. And, um, and yes, and thank you. I would, um, I would give, I'm giving referrals to people that want a, someone who writes dating profiles, which I've been doing for 25 years. Um, I'm giving, and again, my price points aren't as high as what matchmakers typically charge. So I'm giving 30% commission um, on any, on any leads that anybody sends my way. If you need people that need, you know, just a profile critique, because I have seen some of these really bad profiles, like one guy's profile said, and I reached out to him, I said, what are you nuts? My, you know, I'm going to take you on a dream vacation to Italy. Right. You know, that's like saying, can you like dig the grave for me? So, you know, instead, you know, I said, you know, well, I think, you know, as much as you love Italy, why do you, do you cook Italian food? Let's show a picture of you in your kitchen and your favorite pasta. But don't tell people you're taking them to Italy when there's a coronavirus crisis. So there are a lot of really stale profiles out there that just are not relevant to the way people want to communicate today. And I think so many of them need to, you know, what I call the digital facelift. I think that's a great idea. Um, I know that Tammy uh, Shackley has a uh, quick comment. Tammy, why don't you tell us what's been working for you? Just real quick with the, my background's news, politics and philanthropy and, and all three of those careers are impacted by things like this. So I was in philanthropy in 2008 when the last crash happened. And what they've always taught you in fundraising is it's so much easier to retain someone, a relationship that you already have than to acquire a new one, just like in fundraising. So when the coronavirus started coming out, I, you know, I was doing my daily calls that you know, staff has me scheduled for and I'm doing my interviews. I immediately started saying, listen, I can already tell you there are going to be price changes and opportunities and discounts in 2020. I'm going to stay up with what is happening and what is happening to you personally. So I started letting the client tell me what they felt like they could afford. So a $7,500 package at the end of the interview, the client saying, you know, this is kind of scary. I mean, I feel like I could do 5,000 if you would take me as a client. And I said, I feel very comfortable doing that. So I started letting them have the power to say, I'm vulnerable, but I still want this. And I feel comfortable doing this. And like I said on the call yesterday is, I also you know, started coming up with ideas to help them with their comfort of this luxury purchase. That if you wanna make a payment now and let's defer for a couple of months and then you can pay out the rest of your package, we can do that. So just to be flexible, and going back to even your recent lost sales or your 2019 lost sales and just touching base with folks, how are they doing? Listen, I know when we talked, it was 7,500, but the world has changed since we talked. And now is a time that everyone's at home. They have the privacy of working from home. They can do our phone calls. They can do our interviews that they couldn't do at work at, you know, Price, Price Waterhouse, Coopers, whatever. And so I'm encouraging them with the tone of this is still a good time for us to work together, how, how could it work for you? And, and I think it empowers, like back in the day we would say it empowers the donor to share with us what they felt comfortable donating. And today it allows our clients to, I don't, I don't feel like I need to recreate anything. I think I need to be flexible with what the market will bear. And that is changing on a daily basis. So instead of me rewriting the business model in new packages, I'm just listening and modifying it as needed. So I hope that helps. I think that's amazing, Tammy. So, so what I'm getting from what you're saying, which is incredibly valuable, is look at the resources you already have. Go back to the familiar grounds of people who are either 
um, old clients, people that couldn't afford the service, people that already are in your realm, reach out to them, check in on them, see how they're doing, and then listen to them of what they need and what they want. And instead of like predetermining, here is my $5,000 a month package, be flexible and negotiable about creating something that is custom for them for the times. That's yeah. what I'm hearing, which is amazing. I think that that, that is incredibly valuable and it sounds like it's really working for you. Well, and two, I mean, keep in mind, I met my husband because I hired a matchmaker. And at this time, and I was running the Make-A-Wish Foundation at the time, right? So if I was interviewing with a matchmaker, single, running Make-A-Wish, I would have said, listen, this is about to hit my business. I'm probably going to have to lay off staff. Our donations are going to go down. This is going to be a very stressful time for me. I have less time to be online dating would you just take $4,500 and I could be your client, please? And I think the matchmaker, well, they probably wouldn't have based on their business model back then, but I think the matchmaker today could say, oh my gosh, absolutely. You know, I run my own small business. I get it. Um, you know, let's just keep this between us or if we could kind of be private because you are going to be meeting people that have paid 7,500, but that's not for a state topic anyway, you know? And so I think there's a way to do it that's ethical, that's empathetic, and that's reasonable. And I, I you know, I want to touch base with all of those lost sales in 2019 because they were right there, you know, ready to do the 7,500 and then they didn't. And so I think they'll appreciate me asking them, what do you feel comfortable that you could do? Let's get you started during this time to let's make these matches. When everybody can't meet yet, let's get us working on your file. So. Um, I, think, I think that that's a great idea. And I do think that it takes away the frenzy of chasing the people that we don't have and sort of allows us, which is kind of what we were talking about earlier in this session, which is stop the marathon running, look at the resources you have and implement. The one, the one comment I would say that I would, I would recommend just from, from what I'm thinking is as opposed to offering a normal package for six months at a discounted rate, I highly recommend a shorter package because times change so radically that for us offering either a month to month or a six week or maybe even a number of introductions so that when things shift again in two months, you're not sort of having all these discounted packages that you're having to um, work through for another four or five months at a discounted rate. That's my only, my only caveat that I would throw in there. Um, but I think that that's a fabulous idea. I thank you so much for that because I, I think flexibility is everything now um, from reinventing ourselves to adding resources, etc. So thank you. Any other comments or questions um, with uh, what Julie presented um, and before we go to, um, to uh, uh, Terry? Um, let's see, it's great for people to date online. Yeah, and I do encourage, thank you for being generous, Julie, with the higher commission. Um, I think that's very helpful because, you know, everyone's used to getting so much money when you cross refer that I think anything that we can, you know, help each other out, that's fabulous to know. So thank you for being such a great resource. And I love the fact that you in a sense have been here and done that and are circling back to re-provide that. So what a great resource, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so Terry, I would love to, to hear, well, first out of personal curiosity, I would love to hear your comment on sort of what we were talking about a bit ago of, um, of uh, you know, is this Marie Claire story of people moving in together right off the bat or, or engaging in sort of the corona relationship, is, is that doomed for failure or is there every, any evidence that that will impact the trajectory in one way or another before you then get into, you know, adding coaching and how important coaching is? 
Well, good. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Terry Orbach. Nice to meet you and sending hugs and love during this challenging time. Um, I think it's a wonderful story, Abby, that you were talking about. Um, if I look, I'm a psychologist, for those of you who don't know, and I'm a researcher. So if I had to look at the research, um, I would say it probably depends on the age group that we're talking about um, or the generation that we're talking about. If we're talking about millennials, we're not talking about people moving uh, faster or um, moving faster, especially during these challenging times of lockdown and coronavirus. Um, but if we're talking about older individuals, and, and I say older, I don't really mean older. I mean 40, 50, 60, 70s, 80s. Um, and it would be something different. So, you know, Match came out a while ago, like 10, 15 years ago, with that if you were in your 40s, 50s, 60s, you wanted to slow the process down, but it really meant that you wanted to get to know someone first before you had commitment. So if you got to know someone in a day, a week, right, and you felt that you really got to know that person, then you were more likely to commit. Um, and maybe that's what they're doing when they're moving into the same place and they have separate floors, as you said, Abby. So from my perspective, it depends on your age group. I also think it depends on your gender, but that's a whole different discussion. Um, so did I answer the question, Lisa? She... Oh, so, so basically what you're saying is there's no, no trajectory that is the same for all the age categories. Right, right, exactly. See, and I don't think that that relationship is doomed for failure at all. I think it depends on one's expectations. It depends on what you expect at, uh, in terms of relationship progression and then the reality of it doing that um, for what will happen in that relationship. It's interesting because it's also like, how can we advise people in sort of pacing and structuring? And I do think that the, the interesting thing about that article, for, for those of you who haven't read it yet, is like how they allow themselves personal space and how they even the how they support the different energy levels like he's putting her on uh what do they call that bike that that everyone's doing now the peloton 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 right. oh, exerciser um so you know he's he's sort of negotiating and they're sort of creating respect for each other's individuality which i think is um is a really important thing that even if people are rushing the, the pacing of it because of the circumstance, I love the idea of doing it within the context of respect for individual um, space and temperament. So, um, so that's helpful. Okay, so, so um, Terry, I guess talk a little bit about um, how, I guess like in my view, there's nothing more important than coaching the time because like, everyone's freaking out, you know, in, in their different way. And mm -hmm. so how can we go from setting up dates? A lot of us do coaching um, in general, just in terms of date feedback and all that. But like, how can we go from sort of setting up dates to really guiding people through the emotional journey of what's mm -hmm. happening right now? Right. Good question. I think... Um, I would love us all to think outside the box, as, as every, Julie and Abby, Lisa, Ashley, Beth have already said, but even more outside the box. For example, um, I know Julie talked about some wonderful hand-holding, uh, you know, setting up virtual dates, helping people decide what they're going to choose for the dates. Um, Ashley, Beth, you talked about, you know, what one person might send uh, the other person that they want to go out on a date with. Um, I'm going to encourage us to think even broader. Given um, that COVID-19 is happening and people are going on lockdown, they are on quarantine, they're not able to, you know, date, right? And they're not able to see friends and family members as well they're going to begin experiencing loneliness, isolation, and frustration. So what could we do as matchmakers, 
coaches, matchmakers, and coaches to expand our services or add new, really different creative things. So first, and by the way, I think we can do this with singles, but also let's not forget those people who just started dating, who are not living together, but also people, couples who are actually living together. I think that we can all as love experts um, and relationship experts help couples these days as well. And so that you could add coaching packages and services for singles, but you could also add coaching services and packages for couples. So first, what could you do different for singles? Um, you could add coaching for how to actually combat loneliness and manage isolation. And again, there are two kinds of loneliness. There's social loneliness and there's emotional loneliness. And we've been talking about the emotional loneliness that I lack that primary romantic other, but there's also social loneliness. I am not able to see my friends, my family members, and I want more of that kind of connection. So you could offer existing clients or new clients packages on how to do that, how to recommend certain self-care techniques, for example, what they can do to help themselves. Um, you might offer resources that they could read or view online. There are great YouTubes, there are great TED Talks that you could offer um, lists or suggestions or help or view those TED Talks with your clients and talk about it and discuss those resources. You could also do one-on-one -on -one coaching with singles, um, a discussion with what it's like to be single in today's world. We know science shows that when people are able to get out, share, reveal their feelings, they're significantly more likely to be able to handle the effects of loneliness, isolation, and frustration. And by the way, all three of those, frustration, isolation, isolation and loneliness, affect us physically, both emotionally and psychologically and physically. Um, also, as I think we've talked about a little already, it's a perfect time to offer some self-development, self-awareness, uh, sessions where you help individuals grow personally, like how they might identify their key life values, who they are so that they can pick better in the future, that romantic partner, um, what qualities they really need in a partner, or even help them to recognize some of their self-sabotaging beliefs that are preventing them from finding that someone special. And again, not even on the date realm yet, but just before they even start dating virtually or hopefully in the future face-to-face. -face. Um, how to change their expectations of relationships in general. Um, and then second, creating services, packages for, as I said, people who are in relationships. Um, you could, as Tammy said, do that with existing clients. So maybe you've matched people recently and they started dating. Um, going back to those clients, do they want information, services, coaching for how to communicate, how to handle conflict, how to handle stress? how to ignite passion, right? Um, also, couples are living now together, many couples, 24-7. Um, I know in the last week, I have gotten tons of media requests about that topic. How do couples now navigate living together 24-7? What should they do? What are some tips? What are some strategies? So you could offer coaching either to those individuals, people in partnerships, or to couples in general. Um, now, as we've talked about, for some of you, you don't want to coach, you don't want to add coaching, you don't want to expand your coaching. 
um, as we were discussing with Julie and Lisa mentioned, now is the time to partner with other date and relationship coaches and refer your clients, both single and partnered. Don't forget the partners. Um, <laughs> I think that's a huge opportunity, by the way, for everyone on this call, those people who are partnered. Um, so you can refer those people to other date and relationship coaches and get your referral fees. Um, I see that Michelle G is saying that couples coaching is an offering that they already offer, which is wonderful. Either as individuals or as couples, by the way. So you don't have to do relationship uh, coaching with two people. You can do it with one person and they can take it back to the other partner or they can do whatever you're suggesting back to the relationship. Um, and of course, um, if you're interested in tools and resources, to coach singles, to coach couples, to coach uh, people in new relationships, even to coach people in long-term relationships, I do teach the science-based coaching certification course through the Matchmaking Institute. And we go over coaching skills, we go over coaching singles, I, I should say, and I go over coaching uh, relationships as well. It's a 12 week online course with one group live call and one personal one on one call. So you can learn more tools, more resources in that course as well. Ideas, those are some ideas to expand what you're doing now in terms of coaching or to add new. So, a services. couple things that I want to add, which is Julia was asking the price. Let me get to that in one second. Um, I love the idea of when we're thinking about, you know, kind of what Tammy was saying, which is like reaching out to people that we already have in our, our wheelhouse. I love the idea as matchmakers to reach out for couples' work. I think that that then increases our reach drastically. Um, in terms of um, in terms of our coaching course, we our our, um, our course already started um, a week ago. But if anyone's interested in joining it, um, Terry can do an additional session to catch everyone up. And the whole um, certification from um, beginning to end, which is twelve weeks with um, an additional call and modules, we could send that out to anyone who's interested. We've, we are trying to make it the most affordable possibly. Normally it's $5,000 and right now it's um, 3,500 and we do up to, we're now doing 12 month payment plans, which means that um, it's something like, how much is that a month? It's like 200 bucks a month or 200 something. 200 a month, right. So it's over 12 months. And what I'm gonna do, because as you said, Lisa, the course already started. Um, I'm going to do a two-hour session on Monday to catch everyone up to speed so that they can join the call on Wednesday. It includes um, online resources and uh, live group calls every Wednesday. And If I, if I may, um, it was an amazing course and I highly recommend. Um, it was so awesome. And Terry, I'm just so thankful for that awesome class. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's life-changing in the Thank sense, you. it's funny because even though like I have my master's in social work and all that, it's a real specific tool set to be a coach. And so I invested sending my staff to, to the course because I think being able to sort of turn around and actually have a coaching product to offer in this time is key to life. Um, so um, what time of day on Wednesday is it? Uh, so the Julie? live group call is at 10 a.m. Eastern time every Wednesday. Yeah. And we do a lot via email. So there's some homework like um, Ashley and Beth have been doing it recently. And you'll send me the homework and I comment. So there's a lot of interaction, not just the modules online and the group live calls. Um, and there's a special Facebook group. And again, um, 
all of these ideas and resources and added services we talk about, we figure out what you could do during those times. Um, one of the things that I've been talking about with the current group is holding support groups um, uh, for your clients who might be single and for support groups who those for those people who are dating or in relationships. And what I mean by support group obviously is virtual. It's online or it's on Facebook, it's on Zoom, it's on Skype. Um, and allowing people to share their concerns, um, what they're doing now to sustain a, a new or long-term relationship. Um, and so you offer that as part of your packages or services. So there are so many different options um, that you could do beyond sort of the dating, virtual dating uh, services. I, I think that like um, the, the important piece is to provide resources where you're really helping people, but you're not kind of in, I think when you're in panic mode, it, it blocks your creativity. And, and I love, you know, reiterating sort of utilizing the resources that you already have. And by now adding coaching, you're sort of tapping into the pond that you're already sitting in, but then having a, a new offering. So I, I love that idea. So anyone who's interested in that can either email me, lisa at matchmakinginstitute.com or Terry, can you put your, um, your um, email in the chain again? I know you did. Yes, but I did. It's Orba. Oh, I will put it in there. Um, and by the way, just, uh, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm not IT savvy. So, but, I, but I'll work on that. I'll put it in there. <laughs> um, but uh, just again, to offer about the podcast as well. Um, I have a weekly podcast. I have a guest every week. Um, it's called The Love Doctor Is In, and I would love many of you to be guests on that podcast. I know Julie's done it. Um, other people, I'm, I'm Michelle G has done it. Um, or you come on and we just talk about a topic. It's 26 minutes. It is live, and then it becomes an archived podcast. So it's a way, like someone asked, I can't remember how to get your blogs, how to get your ideas out there. Um, and again, you don't get money for doing it, but it's a way to get you out there and what you stand for. I will put my email in there, Lisa. Okay. Yeah. I think that that's fabulous. And thank you for that offering, Terry. I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to be on the show yes, next weekend. week. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, Michelle G is saying that it was really fun and you're a great host. Of course you are. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, so anyone who's interested in the course, ping us or being on Terry's show, ping us. Um, and then any other questions for, um, Terry before I want to Poor Jamie is, is, um, in Singapore. So what time it's like. 1230 at night for Jamie. Thank you for staying up to share sort of what you guys are doing um, with virtual sales and such. Um, does anyone have a quick question for Terry before we switch to uh, Jamie? Okay. All right. So Jamie, thank you for, for joining. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, I know that that your, your business is a humongous um, business in Southeast Asia, and you've had to radically adjust everything from in-person meetings to um, virtual. So can you tell us a little bit about um, how you've been doing sales virtually and what, how you've been adjusting? You have to unmute, Jamie. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah. So uh, just a quick background. So even before this period, we were already doing uh, a form of non-face-to-face -face sales uh, over the phone, uh, over this product we had called eSing.com. So it was a hybrid product, which we actually did a lot of phone sales. Uh, so people would fill up a long profile, and then we'll phone them and follow up with them. And after that, they'll pay a few thousand dollars over the phone. Uh, it is not of our high-end product, which is, uh, I understand many of you are doing, which is tens of thousands, but it's a, uh, a $1,000 to $2,000 product, 
which we did quite well, uh, actually. Uh, so that was our first experience with non face to face uh, phone uh, phone sales. Uh, later on, when this 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 whole uh, uh, virus hit, uh, we were forced in certain countries, like certain countries are in lockdown now, to experiment even deeper into this. So what we wanted to do was to do into uh, video consultation, thinking um, besides the phone, uh, video consultation will have the advantage of uh, you being able to see the client, like what we can see each other now. And there's some uh, verification of how they look. And there's a stronger connection. Uh, that is uh, one of the reasons why we have uh, embarked on this. Uh, we have went on this. Uh, what's interesting is the turn up rates of this is quite high. So I think, uh, I mean, in our view, we thought a lot of people would not show up for their appointments. So we set the appointments ahead of time and around 60, 65% of the people uh, would turn up for the appointments. Uh, to us, that was uh, that's not bad really. Uh, being this is uh, this was the one of the first times we did video consulting over sales. Uh, but the problem, the challenge is the conversion rates after that is much lower as compared to face to face. So what we have done is then we have taken our phone model uh, to, uh, and combined it with our this video sales model. So currently, the sales being done, which has a higher conversion rate, is it's actually partially done by phone and partially done by video. Uh, the reason why sometimes video also has a, there's some times there's a disconnection problem, which uh, be, I mean, Zoom now is incredibly smooth, to be honest. But many times, uh, the clients will get very annoyed when they get cut off or there's, a, there's some lag or anything, whereas phone has a bit less of that. So pretty much what we are doing now is a hybrid of phone and video. And that is working out better. Uh, the conversion rates, however, are not as high as face-to-face -face still. And it's still a work in progress. Uh, and it's something we are still experimenting with. So everything so far has been, uh, we have been quite disciplined in the scripting and asking permission to record for training purposes. So uh, all this is, uh, we are experimenting and trying to improve the conversion rates. Uh, and that's where we are pretty much. Uh, people are, buying, but uh, it's still a work in progress and people are not buying the conversion rates to be as, as high as we like versus face-to-face, -face. but it has improved since we have been experimenting and really testing it and pretty much scripting it as well. Uh, what openers to use, what uh, or icebreakers to embark on, how to close, what are the steps to do the admin to make sure they pay uh, sooner than uh, in, in, one, in one sale meeting rather than many. Uh, so all this is uh, uh, scripted as well as uh, practiced with the team week after week since uh, we have been in this process Yeah, in, in all five countries. So uh, the thing is, yeah, we will definitely keep everyone updated as we go along. Uh, bad news is it hasn't replaced the conversion rates of face-to-face -face yet. The good news is at least there are sales. And uh, it's, it's uh, made more progress uh, in the past five weeks than uh, the, right in the beginning, which was really low conversion rates and all these experimentations. So what you're saying is, is it, so, so are you still getting leads or are the leads less as well? Uh, we're still getting leads. Uh, the thing is for some countries, we still can do face-to-face -face, uh, appointments. Uh, but uh, the, uh, we have understanding with the country hits that, uh, that despite the fact that we would prioritize face-to-face -face appointments still because the conversions are still higher, uh, we would make progress in those countries with, over the video consulting by, by offering as an option for some of the leads that are maybe not as hot as, the, as some leads. So it, it, it's at least a practice session for us. Uh, for countries that have entered uh, lockdown now, like for example, Thailand, where it, we can't meet face to face. Uh, so they went full on for video consulting. And uh, that is, of course, having much lower conversion rates, as I mentioned, but at least there is a chance. And uh, sometimes it takes more than one someone meeting, it requires follow ups. Uh, so it is also harder in a sense that you there will be more follow ups as well before they make payments. So, so basically we're saying, you know, phone, they fill out a larger profile form, uh, the phone and then video and yeah. that 
for the lower price point packages, let's say five thousand and under, that's been been you've yes. been close. Okay. That, that hasn't worked. Uh, so it's important for them to do some pre-profiling uh, work before they do the call. That's our experiment and we found that out. If they don't do it, uh, firstly, they're less, they less serious in the call. And because they do it, that more can be done on the call. which makes them even more engaged with the process. Rather than, it's better than doing it in the, in the call itself, that, that attempt to do that profiling. Uh, that weakens the process actually and reduces the conversion rates. So you need to do something with them. They need to do something before the meeting to treat it seriously as well. Well, that's an interesting idea in terms of being able to get them sort of engaged a bit more in the process. And I think that, that because you um, get a lot of leads, I think a lot of the matchmakers here are getting less leads, but I think that being able to do sort of the phone in combination with um, the video afterwards, then, you know, it's an adjustment. And I think a lot of people are looking at sort of a smaller price product as well. So that might be more doable than selling a $25,000 contract via- I mean, uh, this, this is probably applicable also for other products. Like if you are selling coaching or you're selling other, uh, Profile writing, so uh, what I hope our experience also can benefit. So generally, that, that's what I'm sharing what what we have experienced through, and uh, it could work for the. It will probably help also with a higher price point product as well. I mean, some of the basics, uh, yeah, and but uh, definitely our price point is the five thousand and below, and this is our findings. Yeah. Okay, great. And can you also share um a little bit about um the global love marketplace um, because I know that I don't know how many of you know about the global love marketplace. We've been talking about it. It's a free marketplace that you guys can sign up for. And we're, um, we opened it up to 50 new people and now we're opening up to the next 50 because we already have, uh, I think about 60 people signed up. Um, and uh, Jamie, can you explain a little bit about the Global Love Marketplace and how people can sign up for the beta test for that? Sure. Uh, so we already hit 50 over. So uh, based on that, that's good. But since it's a, it's a good, it's also a numbers game, uh, as we get more and more bigger for the network, to, for this collaborative network, the type of online players we can approach will be also more interested. So we have now opened for the next 50 so that we can build up the numbers further uh, in a very step-by-step -step, uh, stage. So basically, it's just join our, the, the CRM. We have made it free for one user for this purpose. So you can just join in. And that's where the leads will be listed in time once the deals with the online players go on. And that's where you make your purchases. And then after that, you go on your workflow, own workflow, whether your own CRM, whether it's in another CRM or ours or that is a uh, gist of it is uh, just join the our free CRM and then uh, re register your interest. Uh, with the numbers, uh, the online players will be more interested to work with us and, in, in, uh, and also give us more leads as a result because uh, you know, there's, uh, re these are revenues for them and in the future, it will be revenues for us. Okay, so um, so I, I just wanted to clarify, Michelle G is just um, asking for clarification. So the, the global marketplace is, is a location where we sign into the CRM section and online players can put all their excess leads that matchmakers and coaches can purchase. So it's a free marketplace and it's free to join, it's free to participate. And all um, ultimately we're looking for is enough players that are part of that for it to be interesting for the online players to upload their leads. So if we have a hundred matchmakers, it's a lot more interesting than if we have 20 matchmakers. And for us, any leads for matches or sales is, is a win-win. So, so we're just creating that free um, marketplace and for anyone who wants to join, you join now and there are no leads in there now, but then the next step would be to put everything forward. Let's see, got it. So it's the MMLS project moving, yes, forward. So it's similar to what we had before, which is um, 
a MMLS, which is sort of more matchmakers sharing with each other, like, hey, I have these people, I have access, but this is more open to online players. Um, so um, yes, it's for global, it's everyone. So it's globally. So can you send um, the link here, um, Jamie, for people if they just want to get a link for the global marketplace? Sure, sure. Uh, let me just message that. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so, so anyone- There, there, was, there are some uh -huh. questions as well. So maybe, yeah. maybe once sooner after I just, once I just- Yes. Um, whoever has a question can unmute and ask the question. I could. I can't find it now. Uh, question for Jamie: How long are the video phone calls um, for in the hybrid interview? Uh, it's, uh, it's quite long, to be honest. Uh, uh, but of course, it's based on interest level. Let's say the call goes on, and let's say the person is a. Uh, not very uh, hot about the whole thing, then it doesn't, it's not more than 20 minutes, I think. Uh, but if the in, there's interest and they go on or that, then it takes around 45 minutes uh, to 55 minutes, maybe an hour. So this, this range, so up to an hour plus is possible as well. Okay, any other questions for anyone? Because I know we've, we've, sort of been on here for a long time. Um, I, I hope that everyone found this valuable. Um, are there any questions for any of the speakers before we conclude? Okay. Uh, hi guys. Um, my name is Martina. I will try to uh, um, oh, start a video here. Um, hi, um, my name is Martina. I'm from uh, Slovakia. It's a small country in the uh, Eastern or Middle Europe. And uh, would we, um, is this CRM open or also for for whole world or is it just for America or English speaking countries? Uh, it's available for the whole world, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if I understand right, there will be uh, leads like from online dating portals which are open uh, to do matchmaking uh, um, I, I didn't catch that sorry uh, so what do you say will, so the online companies will have uh the singles opt in to be part of this um global marketplace so when you see someone listed it's people that have opted in. Um, and so, um, you know, I think if you sign up for being part of it, it'll have more information and more instructions, but it's definitely worth that. Obviously, like, you know, some the online markets will probably load them into certain demographic areas first, mm -hmm. but it's a global marketplace. Yeah. Okay, I see. Okay, thank you. Any other questions um, for any of the speakers before we conclude? Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, here, um, Julie just put her information and then um, Michelle, thank you, globallovemarket.com. Um, and um, Obviously, if there's any questions or if you want to contact anyone, you're welcome to send uh, an email to me, lisa at matchmakinginstitute.com. And any comments or any follow-up, please let, let us know. And thank you so much for being a part of this unbelievable and strong, resilient community. Um, I think coming together, thank you, Ashley and Beth. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone. And, and thank you so much for, for giving resources to really help our clients stick through this and not feel so alone. Our job is probably one of the most important jobs other than the healthcare professionals right now. And so um, the more we connect, the more we nurture each other, the more we share, the more we could help our clients. So thank you for participating. And um, we will be announcing additional um, 
calls in the future. So if there's any topics that you would like to um, have us cover or that we haven't addressed, please stay connected. Feel free to write us at info at matchmakinginstitute.com. Those of you who are not part of the Professional Love Connectors group on Facebook, please join, stay connected, stay safe, um, and we will, um, we will stay engaged. So thank you everyone for joining. Cheers to spreading the love. <laughs>